So we already did the Facebook Q&A. It's time for the Twitter Q&A. Thanks to those of you that went to the Twitter page and submitted your questions. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll start off with Legendary AP, who asked, which of these three stars of the past would you like to re see return to WWE for one more match? Angle, HBK, or Austin? Um, Austin. I mean, it's been 12 years. You know... By the time you get to WrestleMania 32 next year, it'd be 13 years. That'd be the one I'd want to see the most. Philip Covey, in wrestling, which territory had more impact, Florida or Texas? I'd go with Florida. I think Florida, yeah, for sure. Um, Darth Destro MD, nice Twitter handle, brother. Uh, did you see Stephen A. Smith's response to Hulk Hogan? No. Do I want to? No. Um, is Stephen A. Smith uh, bothered enough to take time out of his day from affixing his lips to Floyd Mayweather's sphincter to be able to say anything about Hulk Hogan and what he said? Uh, you know, Stephen A. Smith is a tool. And if you didn't think so before, his man love fest with the woman beater Mayweather should have sealed the deal. While what Hogan said was terrible and atrocious, I mean, if Stephen A. Smith tried to defend Hogan, you know, it really doesn't help. And if he sat there and tried to blast Hogan, again, I didn't hear him, I didn't see them, and I don't care to. Either way, Stephen A. Smith just needs to shut the fuck up and do his crappy first take show with Skip Bayless. Ty Ty Rossi, who's the better wrestler, Nikki Bella or John Felix Anthony Randolph Mortimer Cena? Wow, I thought you were going to call him Lord Voldemort there at one point in time. Oh, WWE 961. Do you miss the varsity villain questions on your Q&A videos? Absolutely. And then also Schlag Daddy, uh, who from the old OTRS team did you have the most chemistry with? I think with each of the other four members, there was a, a chemistry on screen or on video, so to speak, uh, of different types, uh, with whether it be Marvelous Mark, or Metal D, or Mr. Rout. Um, and B-Rad even, let's throw B-Rad in there. Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it, all of them, there was, come, there was a, I thought there was some type of on-screen chemistry there from a video standpoint that could come across the audience. But I, I think the best chemistry had to be uh, Triple T. I think Tony, I don't think anybody really disputes that. Yeah, we knew each other the longest um, or I knew him longer than anybody else. We were the closest of friends out of the group in terms of me and him compared to me and anybody else. So, you know, we have more common interest overall. So, yeah, it was me and Tony by far had the best on-camera chemistry. No, no question about it. A Bucklaw Ping Pang. Who in the right mind thought, let's have our WWE World Heavyweight Champion tap out to the U.S. Champion on Raw. Vincent Kennedy McMahon backed up by... Bucky Dunn. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a fabulous idea. What better way to try and distract people from the whole Kogan debacle than to have Cena as the U.S. champion not only beat your WWE World Heavyweight Champion, who just main evented a pay-per-view eight days ago against fucking Brock Lesnar, who ended the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania 30, but let's have John Cena tap out Seth Rollins. Because that's a good idea, right? This is why even bother? Why would anybody at this point, from a realistic standpoint, why would anybody get in the fucking ring with the guy? You know you're going to lose. Just hand over the fucking title. Just lay down. Save everybody a bunch of fucking time. Oh, ridiculous. Vase, or Vase Dodo, uh, what are your thoughts on Ambrose jobbing to Big Show on Raw? <laughs> oh, Ambrose got one over at him, and Big Show went through the barricade off. Oh, Fucking Christ. So what are you doing? What the fuck are they doing? Why the hell is Ambrose wrestling Big Show to begin with? Oh, first time ever. Blow it out your fucking ass. My viewership was down this week. A bunch of random matches. First time ever. Fucking stupid. And Ambrose jobbing to Big Show is also fucking stupid. Period. My JJ1279. Do you think DDP could have filled in for Hogan if they ever kicked him out of the NWO? I think he had the mic skills to make it happen. I don't. Uh -uh. Now, it wasn't just about mic skills in terms of being that guy in the NWO. There were only a couple of people that could have ever really truly made that work. Hogan was one. 
Flair could have been another one. However, Flair being a part of that type of group, especially going back to his days with the Horsemen, wouldn't frankly have been that much of a stretch. It wouldn't have been that much of a change in the Ric Flair character. I don't think it would have had the shock factor and the appeal of a Hogan doing it. The guy that would have been able to potentially make it work, even though he wouldn't have been that mouthpiece you know, all the time, would have been Sting. It could have worked with Sting, I do believe. Especially if you went black and white crow Sting. That could have worked. Would it have worked as well as Hollywood Hulk Hogan? I don't know. Because I don't know if people ever really wanted to boo Sting, but it got to a point where people wanted to hate on Hogan, and then once WCW and Hulk Hogan provided you with a reason to hate Hulk Hogan, you started to like it and enjoy it. Uh, but to me, it would have had to have been Sting. That's the only other real guy I could come up with that would have been the right guy in that spot if it wasn't Hogan. That's just me. I don't think it would have worked with Flair, and I most certainly don't think anybody else was a big enough star or believable enough as a WCW guy to be able to pull that off. Uh, Michael Corvin, do you still own that Hulk Hogan HNIC shirt you wore in one of your older videos, and do you plan on getting rid of it now? I most certainly don't plan on getting rid of it. Unfortunately, I no longer have it. Uh, is there a part of me that is entertaining the thought of getting some type of Hogan shirt made? Absolutely, and I'll rock it, you know, out of satire and parody and all this other crap. Um, I wish I still did own it, because if I did own it, I would probably still be rocking the fuck out of it, person, honestly. Dusty Rozier, who really was better overall, HBK or Triple H? For my money, I'll go Shawn Michaels. I thought he was more versatile in terms of the different things you could do with his character. Frankly, I just thought he was a little more entertaining, both in terms of the side stuff you could do and in the ring. I thought he was more versatile in the types of matches he could have with different types of people. I just think Shawn Michaels was a better overall performer, in my opinion. Um, let's see here. Although you can sit there and say, well, you know, at least he didn't sit there and sleep with Steph and you eat like Triple H and do, 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 do. Well, who did, who did Shawn Michaels sleep with? Let's think about that for a second. Boring Life 96. What would Taker's legacy be if he never had the streak to begin with? Oh, I, I think, still think he would have a great legacy. He would be one of those truly respected individuals like he currently is. I think Taker would still be Taker. The, the streak, unfortunately, towards the end of his career came to define him in a lot of ways, which is a shame in part because he only wrestled every year at WrestleMania. But it was only one part of the story. There's still a whole lot of the story there with Taker that doesn't involve the streak that makes for a truly legendary, iconic career. There's no question about it. Uh, of Love and Hate asks, I know you watch Empire, but have you watched Power? No, I have not. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I'm going to. A lot of people, when they find out that I watch Empire, will automatically go right there. Have you watched Power? And usually my response is, does it have Terrence Howard or Taraji P. Henson in it? And the answer, I believe, to both of those is an unequivocal no. And at which point in time I say, well, then I'm not fucking watching it then. If it had Terrence Howard... If it had Taraji P. Henson, then that's a different story. So I'm going to give me some cookie if you get my drift. And Lucius Lyons a beast. That's my dude. Power doesn't have that, so fuck power. No, I don't know. I haven't seen it. haven't watched it. I don't really, really know much about it, honestly. I probably should be, though, I suppose, huh? Just is what it is. Dexter C. 73. Should the WWE turn the Hogan controversy into an angle? I think so. I mean, <laughs> excuse me. If everybody else is going to cash in and capitalize on what Hogan says, why can't the WWE? Furthermore, it would be a real chance to sit there and provide a good social commentary on the WWE and their history and where they currently are. It would be the chance to potentially make a new top black superstar um, and also be a way, frankly, to generate some interest in their product. You know, the whole thing about Hogan and, uh, pulling him off of Tough Enough and, you know, removing him from the website, not selling his merch, Mattel not making his toys. Uh, that's the right thing to do. I mean, when I look at it. Like, Austin next week on his podcast is going to have Paige. I think it's stupid, the fact that if you're going to have somebody on from Tough Enough, why wouldn't you have either Chris Jericho or, I don't know, Daniel fucking Bryan, you're going to have Paige on? 
You can take that Divas Revolution shit and blow it out your ass. I mean, if I'm going to choose out of those three, I'd much rather have Daniel Bryan or Chris Jericho for sure over fucking Paige. But with that said, you would think that the original guest would have had to have been Hulk Hogan. And what better way to get people talking about your fucking network and talking about the WWE than to run full steam into this and have Hulk Hogan appear on Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast? Why not? I remember when this company had balls the size of grapefruits. And now they've shrunk up into itty bitty teeny tiny kumquats. And you can take all that publicly traded crap and blow it out your ass. At the end of the day, that publicly traded company and with those shareholders, they, they want to make their dividends. They want to make money. And if what WWE would do would ultimately make them more money, then that's the only thing that fucking matters. Seriously. I think they're missing the boat here. I think they're missing a huge opportunity. You know, instead of running away from it, you know, take it, own it, make, try to make a positive out of it. Make some money out of it. That's what the fucking world's about. It's about that chop. All this feel-good shit and everything else you hear about is a load of shit. You always want to find the truth. Follow the fucking money trail. And in this particular case, like I said, if all these other media outlets are going to cash in, especially on the internet, on this whole Kogan shit, why shouldn't the WWE be able to? Because at the end of the day, they're the ones that are going to be most closely associated with Hulk Hogan. So why, why not be able to cash in on it? Why not be able to capitalize on it? Yeah, I think they're, they're missing the boat here and making a bad mistake, in my opinion. Uh, California EST96, who do you think killed JFK? And will you do an autobiography type video one day? A lot of us are interested after all these years. Are you seeing an autobiography? Oh, you, you're talking about like a day in the life video of me or like a, a story of me? Now, sure, a lot of you would believe that I would love to come on here and talk about the magnificence of me and the magnificence of me and my life throughout the course of a video or a series of videos. Eh, I guess you never rule that out. Anything is possible. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that type of thing, uh, but we'll see. You, know, you never know. Uh, who do I think killed JFK? I don't know who killed him for sure. However, I do believe that it wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald. And what I'll quickly say about it before we finish this Q&A is this is that most people believe there was some type of conspiracy to kill JFK. When you look at it, I mean, here's what I have a problem with. Lee Harvey Oswald got off three shots with a crappy carbine rifle in a short amount of time from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository, then got out of the School Book Depository with nobody saying anything to him, with nobody being able to stop him. So he goes and ends up bumping into, what was it, Officer J.D. Tippett, and shoots him dead, and then decides after this day of a killing spree where he thinks he might have killed the president, he killed the police officer, he decided he was going to go to a fucking movie theater. A movie theater. That, to me, reeks of a CIA meeting and reeks to me of somebody burning Oswald. That he was a fall guy, he was a patsy, and especially when you factor in what happened a couple days later with Jack Ruby. Something that's always stunk about that, especially when you look at the Warren Commission and they sealed those documents as part of that investigation for how many years? I still think it's many years to come when everybody involved with that commission is long since dead and everybody involved with that day is long since dead. Um, yeah, I, I can't say for sure who did it. Um, you hear all types of different theories, and some are more plausible to me than others. Um, but at the end of the day, the one thing I do firmly believe, that it wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald, and I most certainly don't believe that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone, if anything else, worst case scenario. Grassy know whatever the fuck else you want to say. So, that's it. Thanks again for you guys that submitted your questions for this Q&A. Uh, check out some of the other videos on this channel. There's more stuff coming up this week, and I'll do some more Q&As coming up this weekend, so stay tuned.